Welcome to module 2 uh, of our lectures and uh, in this module I'll try to kind of do some recap of uh, various programming techniques and specifically Python and uh, kind of we'll, we'll start with just with the basic Python and uh, the second part of uh, within this module will be more detailed uh, stuff about uh, socket programming. Uh, just a small uh, caveat here. I'm not. It's, so this uh, lecture is not intended to be a complete tutorial of the Python. Uh, I'll just cover some very basics. I assume you can uh, either already know a decent amount about uh, about Python, or you can learn more in uh, uh, different sources. So, for example, I have also included a six-hour uh, YouTube video like with more. Kind of comprehensive version of uh, of this tutorial uh, of the uh, Python introduction, but uh, just to give some uh, basic idea, so we uh, everybody on the same ground. I'll I'll just try to uh, go over. Uh, so first of all, in the in, in this class, we're going to be using Python version three. Um, this is the the most recent version of uh, of the Python. Uh, some people still using the two point seven and something. Uh, but uh, it's already been deprecated and uh, very soon nobody will be using it, even though there is still use of it. Uh, you can download, it's open source, everything is open source, so you don't have to pay money for anything. And uh, there are several options how you deal with Python. You can just use your favorite uh, text editor and simply edit files and then run them in command line. Or uh, alternatively, you can just use the PyCharms ID, uh, where you can write the application. It provides additional help. So you can highlight uh, different things, highlight the obvious errors, and you can also run the programs from there. Uh, so for that, I also included a link as part of this PDF, so, or you can just uh, Google the PyCharms and download for your platform. Uh, I think for Windows people, this would be even better option because it also comes with the Python embedded, so you don't need to install anything else. And effectively, we can continue working uh, in that environment for the kind of to follow the lectures as well uh, to do the homework uh, too, and as well to do all the projects. Uh, but besides this PyCharm, there's a tons of other frameworks. If you already know something else, feel free to use that. Uh, I'm usually just doing my Emacs and running Python in the command line. Uh, but uh, for simplicity, for this talk uh, and kind of for other ones, I will be using PyCharms. Okay, so just uh, let's start with the very basic stuff. Um, in Python, there are just several uh, built-in types. Um, I don't think I have included uh, all of them, but they represent the basic things like string, integer, uh, floating number, uh, boolean, list, dictionaries. I think there are tuples and some other special. Uh, I think I'm omitting buffers. Uh, and there are several other kind of core types. And uh, there are also tons of different uh, higher level uh, types. And uh, we're going to be working with one uh, such type as part of the uh, second part of the lecture. Uh, I mean, the uh, second lecture of the module. Uh, and there are like socket type. And uh, there are tons of uh, other different things, uh, different extensions. Uh, so I guess if you learn the basic of the Python, and then you will have to spend a lot of time to figure out uh, how all these uh, modules are working. Uh, so if you're talking about the variables, uh, so this is like the core of our programming. Uh, so in Python, we can, uh, as in many other languages, give them uh, names using uh, Latin characters from lowercase, uppercase. You have to start with at least lower or uppercase, but then you can include digits and underscore. You, can uh, you cannot include any other characters. Uh, for the code structure, I will try to get uh, a little bit more uh, in the future, but uh, the, uh, the Python is uh, kind of being defined uh, using blocks. And all blocks, uh, unlike other languages, are identified by the indentation. So if I go to my uh, PyCharm, uh, so this is already prepared some small program. Uh, so, I mean, we can always start just writing the application and simply running this application. So for example, if you write the print hello world, uh, we can run it here as a run and we select uh, that we're running this scratch file. Uh, or you can select any other file that you created. Uh, you can go to in the command line and just simply run this Python 3 Python uh, file. 
and, and that code will be executed. And so this is actually the full example of what have been executed already. And what I was trying to highlight, everything is a block, and the block is identified as an indentation. So for example, if I type uh, Uh, so in fact, this uh, random stuff will define the function. So, and uh, these four spaces or whatever, two spaces, three spaces, it depends on your personal preference or define code style, uh, define the block. And everything within these four spaces will be part of the function. Everything outside the four spaces become kind of somewhere outside the function. And uh, the Python will complain if you do something like this. Uh, so this is actually an ill-defined program uh, because you just uh, have a mixed up of uh, indentation and Python wouldn't know uh, what exactly to do. And the uh, PyCharm is uh, smart enough to actually identify that this is an error and it's kind of uh, highlighting there is some problem in this, in, in this program. Uh, it should highlight if I run the program, it will actually complain and tell me a lot of errors. Uh, there is some kind of indentation error that I need to fix. Uh, I will go over all the individual uh, kind of function body and other stuff a little bit later. But just remember, everything is uh, kind of organized in blocks, and block is started uh, using uh, something uh, definition. Then there is a column. Uh, and then after column, there's, you have to indent in a certain amount of spaces uh, and keep that indentation within this block. You can create block inside the block, inside the block, inside the block, but you have to have all this indentation. Uh, again, when you get used to it, it's a quite simple. Like if you're coming from Java or C++ or C, uh, this would be a little bit different for, from, the, from that perspective. Uh, for this kind of... I mean, again, like I'm going in a little bit random order for different things. So what I want to highlight here, uh, you probably will need to do a lot of string formatting for, for, for as part of the project. And in Python, this operation is quite simple. So on the slide, I already highlighted a few ways how you can uh, combine two strings. So you can just literally use the symbol plus uh, and string plus string. Uh, that would simply work. Uh, you cannot do that with a number because the number is a different type. Uh, but you can always print some form of a number inside a string using the formatter. And the formatter is simply a string with a few special like a percent something uh, characters. Uh, that percent s represent that you will be including string. Percent d that you include uh, the number. And then you specify percent and the list of uh, items that you will be including. So I actually gave you the three forms uh, that you can use uh, in your project. So you can kind of, whenever you need to, to do some printing, you, you will have something interesting. Uh, another one that I have included here. Uh, so this one is just cool way in Python. You can repeat a certain number of characters. And let me just uh, try a, a few examples. So the one that uh, I will try to, like, hello world, multiply it by four. Uh, effectively, will create a string that contains uh, four hello worlds. And if I run it, you can see uh, it created uh, four hello worlds. Uh, if I do something uh, different, if I, instead of this uh, multiplied by four, try to do plus, uh, that I said not supposed to work. Uh, and it's actually complained that it did not work. Uh, but the good part, you can actually easily create string from the uh, number. So you simply add in str and in, in parentheses put in the number. So now it would actually work. So everything is fine. And the other way that I was showing you was a percent %d uh, and then percent, uh, and then running again, um, that worked again. And if I wanted to include some string, uh, some string uh, percent s, and then I have to include actually two things that I have to use uh, this format: uh, some string uh, and mm, number 42, for example. And again, if I run it, uh, you see that there is a hello world, some string, some strings 42. Uh, let me increase this size a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, for string formatting. I hope you play with it. This is not the only ways. There's a tons of other ways. If you prefer a different approach, like uh, there's a simplified version in, uh, in the recent versions of Python, uh, use that one. 
another cool feature of Python is the concept of slicing. You can do it on lists uh, or strings, and string is technically a list of characters. And uh, you can do various things. You can uh, extract a single character, you can or a single item. You can extract uh, several items. Uh, or you can extract several items separated by a few elements. And uh, to just uh, highlight how all of this, uh, all these things are working, uh, let me just define some uh, variable like v, and I'll, this time I'll use uh, some uh, string of hello. Uh, so what I can do now, uh, print v uh, first character, which starts with a zero, and uh, I will suppose to print h. Uh, I can print uh, every other character. So if I just put uh, this format, uh, HL, or I can use all the odd values, uh, so EL. Or I can try to print the last character. I can actually use negative number to represent the character from the back, uh, zero. And what else, what else, what else? Uh, I can get a substring uh, starting from the second character, uh, like from from that would be the second character, so it's hello, or I can get a substring that ends with the two characters at the back. So I'm just cutting two characters at the back, um, and in, in any case, you can play uh, in different ways to different things. Uh, so the reason I'm showing uh, this one because you will need this as part of the uh, working with the buffer. So buffer is almost like a string. Uh, like in, in Python 2, it was actually almost exactly the same. In uh, Python 3, string is actually UTF string, so you have to pay uh, very close attention to that. And um, all the uh, socket operations, they actually need the buffer. Uh, so sometimes you can uh, create a buffer by, like if you, cr mm, well, st string like buffer. Uh, in Python 3, if you're creating this from scratch, you can add letter B uh, to represent the buffer, which means it's not UTF string, but it's a kind of some form of a buffer. Or you can, uh, if you have something like string, you can, you will need to encode it in uh, kind of uh, in, in some encoding. So, for example, uh, I can do the same thing like UTF-8. So that V now becomes a buffer, and if I print V, I'm not sure, I hope it's going to print something. Yeah, so it will print that it's a buffer representing uh, hello. You will need this uh, as part of the project, so remember that part. Okay, so then, uh, then with the slicing. And um, I, on the slides, there is a bunch of more examples. You can go over them later. Uh, another few very, very, very common operations that you not necessarily use this time, but you will definitely use at some point. Uh, so let's say there's a string, uh, again, getting our string hello. Uh, the common operation is to get the number of characters in a string or number of character, uh, number items in a list. So you can just use when v, and again, I'll do print, and it will say it's uh, five characters. Um, and operations, uh, what I have here, length, uh, there's a split operation uh, so it's it's kind of running in this way so split uh, and I can split V um, and you have to actually specify or oh, um, you split in this uh, string represented by V and you want you need to specify uh, what you're splitting by so in this case uh, we don't have any space so if I had the spaces so like hello world uh, we can just specify space and print and it will show us that uh, it's a, now it's a list of two items representing hello and world. Uh, but we don't have to use spaces. We can just use literally world O, uh, letter O. Uh, so it's now represented with two things. Uh, we can use multiple letters, like for example, OR uh, as part of the world. Uh, now we still have uh, two items and any other combinations that you would like. So one thing that uh, I will show you a little bit later, but just to highlight the, the opposite of split operation. Uh, so if I define some simple list like one and uh, two, uh, I can do join uh, in this strange way. So you have to first specify the character that you want to put in between of, of the items, like or some some string, then specify join and then specify the list. And if I print this thing, uh, I think it should 
be something nice like this. If there are more than the two items, then there will be automatic stuff added in between of those. Um, again, most likely you're not gonna. Again, most likely you're not gonna need this, uh, but uh, just to complete the picture. Uh, there's a few operations. I'm not gonna go over them, so you can just check uh, whether it starts with uh, some something. If there's a sub item in the, uh, in, uh, in the sub string and some other string operations. Uh, sometimes useful, uh, you can capitalize, you can get a, mm, some uh, created title, so it's going to capitalize uh, of the, each letter in a sentence, uh, lowercase, uppercase, and some other very useful features. So if you're working with uh, something like text processing, you can do quite, uh, quite a lot in, uh, in Python um, like, mm, with just a few method calls. Okay, I already... Uh, kind of use the word list, I use the word the dictionary at some point, uh, just to kind of uh, capture. So in uh, Python we have uh, these distinct uh, special types. One is list, one is tuple, dictionary, and sets. Uh, so list and tuples are kind of similar to each other. Uh, there are differences in how they operate in some way. So list you already saw, so it's either something uh, containing the items and you can operate on them. Uh, so, for example, string is a special case of list, uh, that is a list of characters, or you can have list of uh, general items. Uh, dictionaries are um, a little bit different, they're kind of uh, key value pair stores. Um, we'll go over in, actually, kind of, I use extensively dictionaries in my programming. It's very, something like if you have a key, don't, don't, it doesn't have to be like numeric index, it can be string or anything else and you have some form of value. And uh, sets are very similar to dictionaries, it's just there is no uh, key in there. It's rather, oh, apologies, there is no value in there. It's just a, some kind of a key storage. Uh, but just to, to get to the idea. Uh, so all lists starts with this uh, brackets, like a square brackets, and you can put anything in there. Uh, there are multiple ways you can create uh, lists, uh, Kind of, you can uh, split something that will um, create a, a list uh, on its own, uh, or you can uh, just explicitly create a list using this list operator, or use the square brackets in, in some way. Um, there's a bunch of uh, stuff in here. I'll just uh, give you uh, these uh, slides and you can go over them. So you can count stuff, you can uh, check that stuff in the list. Uh, so there is this in operations in, in case you want to write some if statement uh, that doing this. Um, join, I will just showed you an example. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, in different languages it's, it was actually solved. So can, the join was operation on the list, but in this case uh, in Python it is operation on a string. So when you use this, you use a string that you will be concatenating in between and then uh, items that uh, you get inside. Uh, one thing that I want to show you is, uh, is a special case of creating lists. Uh, so that was a very simple way to create a list, uh, but let's, so kind of, let me give you uh, this example. So we have like x and there's a list of, okay, so this time it's a list of integers, so it's a 1, 2, 3. And let's say I want to have a string containing all these th three integers, so I want to use some form of a join, uh, and let's say very similar to what I was doing before, and I would like to do something like this. Um, but that would not, uh, this would not work. So if I do print and we'll try to run it, it will complain that it's uh, not a string. I cannot uh, concatenate x with, um, because x is not string. So I have to do something different. And what I can do is actually create another list. Uh, so this, I will show you two ways. One is creating list uh, on a, kind of in a separate variable or creating list on the fly. So what you can do is you can write something like this. You can write str item for item in x. So this one, I, I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead, is using the for loop inside the, uh, the square brackets and uh, kind of using the sum operation on the item to do something. Uh, so this time, if I use y here, uh, it would actually work. Yes, it's, it was actually working. 
and you, I can simply replace it here and create a list without creating this uh, separate variable uh, and it's still working okay get back to this one uh, join uh, okay I already talked quite a bit uh, sorting um, you're not going to need sorting as part of the projects, but just remember there's nice uh, functions on directly on the list that you can either sort in place or uh, create another object that already sorted based on either, if it's not numbers, it, they will be sorted uh, either uh, by the value up and down or lexicographically if it's a, some, some kind of a string. Um, ba -ba -bum. Um, this is just examples. Length already covered. Uh, so, so now I need to a little bit talk about this assign and copy. So this is, has to do with the uh, memory management in Python. So whenever we have a variable, it's actually be assigned uh, to. There is always some kind of an object. So we can uh, have a variable, assign a list, and this uh, can, would create an object of a list and will be assigned to A. If I simply uh, use this B to A assignment, uh, it will not automatically create a new list object. It will be still that object that uh, kind of was created originally, and B will be simply a reference to that object. So if I use the C++ terms, so everything is uh, kind of transferred, copied uh, by default is by reference, not, not by value. So if I, I mean, I'll literally just try to uh, use this example. Uh, so I have uh, a uh, sorry a as a list of uh, one two and three. Uh, I assign b uh, kind of as I'm thinking copy of this object, and we'll simply try to modify the first value of this list to say number nine, and we'll try to mm, print the value of a, thinking that it's still uh, one two three. Uh, unfortunately, it will not be, or fortunately, it will not be uh, 1 to 3, it should be 9 to 3, because even though I was using B variable, I was still modifying that original object that uh, was representing, uh, that was created. So, uh, what are the workarounds? So there are actually several workarounds. Uh, one of them is the simplest one, you just uh, have to use a copy. Uh, you have to explicitly create a new list from the list, so that would create a new object, or you can use some form of a slicing. Uh, so let me do uh, the copy operation. So now if I'm printing A, and I also print B in this case, uh, it will be two objects. If I do what I was, uh, I was suggesting using a list, uh, it again would work, or if I do slicing, I, in in the case, uh, so I, uh, I, I kind of I can do complete slicing like this way, or even do it this way. It's the same thing, and in both cases, everything is working. Uh, and this is the same examples. So now move to to tuples. Uh, as I said before, uh, tuples are, uh, tuples are very similar to. Uh, lists uh, with a few major exceptions. So they also re can represent something, the sequence of something, uh, and you can get the length of that uh, something with the major exceptions. Um, tuples are not required to have the same type. Uh, so with a list, you can only you can only have a list of integers, list of strings, list of something else. With tuples, you can have mix different stuff. Uh, uh, like integers and other stuff. Uh, you cannot modify them, uh, so this is like, like insert, append, uh, you can do easily the, this with, the, with lists. Uh, they may use the less space and not, not, not less space, that's a different story, uh, but uh, the major part, so the tuples are effectively are used as part of the function parameters that you will see uh, later. Um, and tuples are defined using just parentheses, and you can have uh, just a list of items inside, or, or you can actually use named uh, parameters inside the tuple. And again, everything is literally uh, to support uh, function parameters, and, but you can use that, the same concept in your program if you really need to. Um, tuple unpacking, so that's another pretty cool feature of uh, Python. Uh, where you can write something like this, uh, but let me get to the program. Uh, so let's say I have a tuple 
uh, and just uh, full and then number uh, bar and number 42. So that's an, uh, our tuple. And I, what I can write is uh, uh, kind of unpack this uh, tuple in this way and that would perfectly work. So it's effectively, we created a tuple of three values, like one is string, another string, and uh, another number, and then I unpacked into directly three uh, different variables, and uh, I'm just trying to print them up, and everything is printed correctly. So this is the same example on the slide. Uh, you can convert list to the tuples, and uh, I don't think it would work the, the other way around uh, unless there's uh, same types, but you can simply use word tuple and it's doing a, a kind of conversion. Uh, so the same approach is actually working for many other types, so you can always try to convert one type to another one simply by uh, using the word of the kind of name of that type and specifying the inside the value of something different. If it knows how to convert, it will convert. If it doesn't know, it will throw you, give you some kind of an error. Uh, moving to dictionaries. So the dictionary, as I said, it's some kind of a map of a key value pair. It is implemented as a hash map, uh, unordered stuff, but don't worry, it doesn't, doesn't really matter how it's implemented. Uh, you're simply gonna be using it as a key value pair, and that's it, like you add it to some stuff, you looking up in this uh, dictionary uh, some elements by, by the key. Uh, to create a dictionary you need uh, these curly braces and uh, there's a, a kind of format how to create uh, the d dictionaries and there's an interface how you get items from the dictionary. So let me try to create something, uh, let's say D uh, I'm using a curly brace, uh, and in a if I use a one-liner, uh, I can use kind of first uh, some kind of a key. Uh, let me do that literally. This key one, uh, number forty-two, uh, key two, uh, one, and actually can mix up the types and, and use a string uh, kind of for the value of key three. And if I print D, it will uh, try to highlight basically the same thing. Uh, I don't have to do it on the same line. I can do a very nice formatting, uh, so it's kind of look like uh, something like this, but for the Python, it actually doesn't matter. Um, so the uh, dictionary, oh, so this is just another way of creating the, the dictionary. If you, can, as I said, you can do conversion. Uh, so, but you cannot just literally do conversion from the list because you, ha uh, you actually have to supply a list of lists in order to do the conversion. So the first item would be assumed as a key and the second item as, as a value. Uh, but I didn't actually use that too much in this way. Uh, and then for the access, um, that's literally very simple. So this is key one, uh, oops, so D and then specify what I want to do, D, D uh, key 2 and D uh, key 3 and it should give me all the results so it actually gave me everything and I want to get to the point oh, oh it's actually here uh, so so far I was trying to only access stuff that exists in a, in a dictionary so so what I was writing like a key 1 uh, but if I try to access something that does not exist, so there's uh, several ways how you're going to deal with that. And sometimes it's actually part of your program logic. Uh, so let's see what's going to happen. So first thing, uh, what is happening? Like in Python, uh, it's giving you error. It's giving you error that this key does not exist. So one kind of basic approach, what you can do, you can try to catch that exception. So this is exceptional error. Uh, and then do something else if uh, this key doesn't exist. So that's valid approach, and uh, I've, I've been using this uh, in um, in many cases. So I can write something like this. Uh, so I can this is like try accept uh, format uh, again. You see that I indented by some number of spaces, and I kept and in one line. It can always be consistent, uh, <laughs> but I was consistent in this case. And I can simply print the key does not exist. And this time we'll actually print this uh, this one. Uh, 
Uh, there's uh, several other ways, uh, actually one more way uh, to deal with this. Uh, instead of accessing using the curly uh, in um, square brackets, you can use a, a special method called get. And uh, in this case you specify key 42. So get is designed not to throw exception, but rather uh, give some default value if the item is not, uh, does not exist. So in, uh, unless you specify explicitly what this uh, default value, it will, it's supposed to return uh, none or, yeah, it returns none. Uh, but you can always specify uh, the second parameter, what the, re what the value you want to return if, uh, in case uh, that item is not in a dictionary, and simply you can specify not in the dictionary. I hope I didn't misspell this word. And it literally will print out uh, this value. Oops, I put comma in the wrong place. So it's 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 knows that the item is not there, so it's returning some uh, some other value. And this is uh, supposed to be exactly what's on the slide. Yes, yes. Um, what else here? Signals. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Uh, so this one, again, jumping a little bit ahead, but uh, uh, there are a few ways you can uh, go over the items in, uh, in the dictionary. Uh, and so you can convert dictionary to different uh, lists. So one uh, such list is the, key, the keys, and another one is uh, values, the values. And let me check what's the complaining. Oh keys, not keys. Uh, so this two um, sometimes extremely useful. So one it will convert uh, this dictionary to list of just keys and the other one all the values corresponding to the keys. And I hope I will highlight this problem. Unfortunately it did not work what I wanted. Um, so one thing that I wanted to highlight and I don't know why it happened to work this time. Um, the Keys and dictionary are not necessarily will be in in the order you have been added. You have added them, uh, so this time it happened to be in the same order. But it's usually the case that uh, because of this hash map implementation, uh, the keys look all over the place, even though they look like so graphically uh, larger than uh, the previous value, but they will be in completely different picture. And values are values. Um, okay, Liz, that's, I'll just skip. Uh, again, the same thing about the copying stuff. If you want to create a new object, you have to create a, a, create a new one using copy. Otherwise it will create, I mean, otherwise you'll be modifying the same thing. Um, in some cases it's extremely helpful because when you pass in the buffer, uh, like you're creating the buffer object and passing it to the function, you don't want to, and you don't want this function to create a new buffer object, but rather do something with that one. Um, if it's a read-only, it's just accessing it. If it's a want to write to that buffer, it will write, and you will be able to access when you uh, when that function returns. So sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's a source for errors. So sets are again they've, is, they're basically the same dictionaries, but uh, without values. Uh, all other operations basically the same. Uh, they also some kind of a hash map, uh, an order, sometimes ordered, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, or you can just use dictionary all, all the time. Um, yeah, even numbers, whatever. Okay, uh, I have already uh, talked uh, about the code structure and you already saw the examples, but just to give a few more things. Uh, so we have a comments and a line continuations. So just to give you examples, uh, so some line, uh, so if you don't comment out, it will be executed. Or if you comment out with the, uh, with the hash sign, uh, it will become, it. you don't have to put the hash sign in the, in the beginning of the line, it can be anywhere. So if you have X1, uh, so that would be common for the variable X. Um, and you can do other stuff. Uh, there is one more convention uh, if you're writing function, writing classes. So just let me give you one example. Uh, 
Uh, so e even in uh, pie charms, it's uh, doing this uh, very gray uh, highlight of the function. Uh, it's saying something like expected two blank lines around one. Uh, so if it's actually wanted you to add uh, some form of uh, oh, two blank lines, maybe it's uh, something else. Uh, but uh, the expectation is that you would write some form of a documentation for each function. You don't have to do it for the homework, uh, for the projects, but at least do some form of a documentation because uh, a Python is not explicitly defining what you're returning, what you're doing. So sometimes it's actually useful if you provide some form of uh, uh, documentation, like in this case, I say it's uh, uh, doing something and that's it. In reality, it's nothing more than just a literally multi-line string. Uh, but and that that is not being assigned to anything; just just exists on its own. Uh, but all a lot of um, documentation processing software actually crawl uh, through the Python documents and expect the first uh, string after the function or class de definition uh, to represent the documentation for that function. Uh, if you kind of play it with um, kind of docsigens and other stuff uh, in for C plus plus for Java. So in those cases, you define the documentation as part of the comments. In, in Python, you define documentation for methods as part of the actual strings. Uh, same thing, but it allows you to actually access documentation from the Python uh, instead of using some preprocessors or some source code management systems um, to understand what's going on. And uh, to give you an example, uh, you can actually uh, get uh, some kind of uh, help or a print um, help for the function func uh, right away in Python. So let me try, it, it may work, oh, it actually works. Uh, so it's simply saying the func is doing, this kind of literally copying what I was helping. Uh, but you can do this help uh, or func uh, for any other stuff. So for example, we did it for, uh, we used list before. Uh, so it will give you a lot, a lot of documentation of what you can do with the list, what is available, what are the constructor uh, and whatever, what uh, other operations. And when we start with the, all this uh, socket operations, you probably want to look in, mo in more detail of what's going on using help, or you just go on an official website uh, that will give you that information. Uh, Multi-line strings. So I, we didn't need to do this multi-line stuff before. Uh, and some of the things in Python actually kind of understand that you can do, you want to do something on multiple lines, so there's not, not a big problem. Uh, but sometimes it's actually would, like PyCharms is smart enough. So for example, if I'm for some random reason, I, I need to split this return and uh, what I'm returning on the multiple lines, uh, you cannot just do this. Uh, so in C++ and C in Java, you may be and doing this, but in Python actually interprets uh, the uh, end of line uh, as a special character and it will think that something is new uh, is happening. So if you use this backslash, it, you can say, oh, the line is actually going to be continuing the next line, so please ignore this uh, end of line. Uh, there are spe special cases when you actually need this, um, but you that's not, again, that's more like a special case than a normal case. Uh, for the important part, uh, so this also kind of implicitly will introduce to the Boolean variables. Uh, so we have uh, if, uh, else, or elif uh, operators. So this one is to define the uh, conditional uh, structure and th th it's kind of very, very simple to use. And again, it will create blo it or create or use blocks inside. So for example, if x equal to, gee, I forgot how to, check the values. Uh, if it equals to one to print uh, okay, uh, else, else print not okay. So hopefully it will print us okay. Uh, I hope I didn't mess up anything. Yeah, it print out okay. Um, what we can, what else we can do? Uh, you can have a several conditions. So if x is two or um, x equal three, uh, it's again, in this case, it's supposed to print not okay. Again, you can do and, uh, you can do 
I'm not sure if it do X no XOR doesn't work. So it just uh, or and or uh, or and not. So not is actually negating operation um, and not x equals three. So it's kind of a, a stupid thing to do for variable comparison or for numeric comparison because you can always do x not equal three. So that's kind of obvious thing to do. Uh, but if you do something more complex like um, let's say creating y as a list of uh, x, y, and z. Uh, so now there's operator called um, x in y. So like in operator will check if a variable x is in a list. And if you have a dictionary, it will try to check if uh, x in the keys of, of that dictionary. Uh, there is no opposite of in. So what you can do is just uh, say not, oops, in this case, you write not x not in list. So you're kind of negating this operator. Um, I think that's already covered most important part. So if not in Y, uh, then print OK. Uh, now it's printing this one. Um, if you want to have multiple conditions, so th there are several ways. So one uh, kind of C++ ish, plus plus ish way, you can put in a, another if inside the kind of the else condition and say if X, again, keep repeating the same condition, but in different way. Uh, print hmm uh, else print not okay so so this one technically unreachable in this program but for illustration for purposes that should be fine uh, so that's how we can write this program um, but the Python programmers decided uh, that it's not too nice that we're kind of increasing the indentation too much uh, so they created this special case uh, called it l if so it's kind of else condition, else, and uh, creating another condition. So we kind of simply reduce amount of uh, indentations oops, uh, that we're doing. So now, basically the same logic, the same program, but uh, you have uh, this else if. You can have multiple else if, uh, like whatever items in it. Uh, I mean, in this program, it's kind of stupid because we do uh, multiple the same conditions, but it doesn't know that we're doing uh, not interesting things. Okay, done with else, else if. Um, there's more examples on our slides that you can uh, look for in more detail later. Uh, comparison, I already show you some. Uh, there are numerical comparison. Uh, I think you can do some of this for strings. Not, I'm not sure if it's actually going to work. But if it works, it will be lexicographical order. Uh, in is uh, for the list operators, and you can kind of check if some character exists in a string. Uh, in not, oh, I forgot to, uh, I kind of exp implicitly told you about uh, Boolean algebra here, uh, but the, all of these things that are happening, uh, like when you do comparison, they actually create a new uh, Boolean uh, value. So I can actually assign it to like, oh, uh, to x and y and print this o value uh, and hopefully it will print us something uh, at the end yeah so it's a, a false uh, or if i opposite of this will be true or we, we can do literally uh, do the same like o and o1 o2 i already lost track of, of this variable so true and false uh, in python they're capitalized uh, represent true and false value. Uh, you can convert uh, tons of different uh, variables uh, to this uh, boolean. Uh, I think numbers, uh, non-zero numbers will be convertible and again the same way uh, as, as others and I think zero is supposed to be uh, this way. Uh, let me print a one and o2. Hopefully they're working. Yeah, so true and false using this conversion. Uh, for strings, I'm not 100% sure. Um, this conversion, uh, okay, another uh, structure that will be actually useful, used in uh, your uh, projects and maybe in homeworks, I don't know about that. Uh, so there's a while loop. So this one I'll create very, very crazy program uh, that creating an infinite loop. And we just will run forever doing nothing. And if I run it, 
uh, it will use all my CPU, <laughs> uh, so I will stop it immediately. Uh, you can do something better. Uh, okay, so we can create some kind of a loop with which is a little bit smarter than that. So we can have a, a variable of x one like while x less than five uh, will do what uh, will uh, print x and uh, increase value of x by one so it's x plus one uh, so now it's actually do something useful uh, and as you saw like i use this pass uh, um, special keyword uh, so this one again related to the the fact that the python expects uh, uh, i mean use these blocks as an indented blocks as a unit of operation and when you have a loop that does nothing um, you cannot have empty line because it's still have to, you have to write something uh, but, but uh, you, you have to write something something tangible that for the program for like a comment uh, it doesn't exist it will still create uh, uh, emptiness for the python so you have to write uh, this special pass keyword in order to create the body of nothingness and when i created the actual body i removed that one Okay, so now hopefully it will work and print the four values or you can do uh, equal to five. So we're going to have uh, five values. Okay, and with this one, um, there's more interesting examples on the slides. Uh, iteration. Um, so this one is done with the for loop. So for loop is a little bit different in a sense uh, uh, from traditional C++ and Java. Uh, so in those cases, you kind of iterate variable um, it's not actually iterate variable, but rather you do something uh, like multiple times with some conditions. In Python, you technically mm, don't do something um, under multiple conditions, but rather you iterate over some items. And you can iterate over multiple different things. So for example, if I have a list uh, like x, one, two, three, uh, for and I can use for loop uh, for i in x and print x. So this one will iterate over item in x uh, and for each of the values it will simply print uh, print them. Uh, oops, I printed the wrong thing. Uh, so it, yeah, so now it's uh, it's a correct thing. A few things. So now I create the uh, so the. <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, there are cases when you want to iterate over the numbers, over a set of the numbers. Uh, like if you want to iterate from number one to four, you can do something like this. But it's kind of obviously as a stupid thing to do. Uh, so there is a special thing called range. Uh, so this range from zero to five. So this one is kind of creating not exactly a list, uh, but something that will work like list in this context. So, oops, from one to five. So it's a, first is the first item that we want to, first number five is the number that is larger uh, than uh, the last item that we want to have. So it's, if you're familiar with the C loops, then it's kind of uh, very similar. And you can um, also add the third parameter as a step value, so it will Kind of acting as a kind of instead of iterating plus one it will do plus two uh, you don't have to use whole numbers you can actually do 0.5 and it's supposed to okay so let me do this way okay i thought it would work okay i was wrong uh, maybe it's working in some different context but uh, forget about this so again we have one to five uh, so what I wanted to say is, uh, so this is, even though it behaves like a list, is not exactly a list. Uh, so for example, if I do this one, uh, 50,000, so we trying to iterate from one to 50,000, it will not actually allocate memory for all these 50,000 items and then we'll uh, iterate all, one by one, but rather uh, we'll create some object that knows how to iterate. And unless you want to access a specific item, then oh, well, like, you have to actually have a list of all those items uh, by conversion to list range 1, uh, 50,000. Uh, th this will kind of be very efficient stuff. Um, just a small note. Uh, so this is true for uh, Python 3. 
for the Python 2, two that was not true and this specific method was creating an uh, actual list and they invented the special X range stuff. But uh, we are working in Python 3 so this comment is actually not uh, applied there. Okay, so iterations for the word, so this is effectively iterating over a list of characters, iterating for other stuff, uh, I think it's also examples in here. Um, another one is here, so iterating over the dictionary, so that's another uh, very common way and probably we'll see the next lecture. So let's say we have a dictionary, uh, foo, and then bar as a two. Uh, so what we can do, we can actually iterate uh, as i in d and we'll try to print what's, uh, what, what it's going to give us. And I forgot to put the colon in there. Uh, it will, so effectively it will assume that we want to iterate only over the keys of this uh, dictionary. If we want to iterate not just over the keys but over the values as well, um, we can do two different things. So one, we can actually access uh, that value using d or uh, do it uh, d get i. So th this is a, a very legitimate way of doing this business. Uh, it's a little bit not efficient, even though when we're doing the Python stuff, we're not doing the uh, nuclear reactor, hopefully. Uh, so we can do slightly different, we can do uh, unpacking here, but we also need to modify this one a little bit. So instead of uh, uh, just iterating over D, which assumes that you're iterating over the keys, which, which is kind of the most common operation, uh, you can uh, specify items that you want to get each individual item and then have E and V uh, together. So now we're supposed to print uh, kind of one by one each line representing the key and the value. Okay, so break... Okay, so the one thing that uh, I didn't talk a little bit, but uh, I can do it now, uh, there are special uh, operators. So let's say we have um, um, two more, uh, let's say X, uh, and three, and just to highlight uh, highlight this one. Uh, so what we can do, we can do the break, uh, like if uh, our key equals x, we do break. So what will, will happen, or what's supposed to happen, we can break this loop. So we don't have to iterate over the each item. So in this case, we iterate it, um, over the full, over it, over uh, this item, and we kind of stopped at that point. So if I run it, it will show only two lines. Uh, if I do a little bit different, I just move uh, here, uh, it will do a little bit different, it will just, uh, it will stop iterating if at the point of x. Uh, there's also a special, uh, oops, I'm just messing up the languages. Uh, so there's also a special word as a continue, which means that you don't have to con execute all the bodies of the cycle completely. So for example, if you decided that you're done with processing of this specific cycle, you can just do continue. And in this case, it's supposed to skip X, or skip printing of X. And if I execute, it will do exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, so break recovered, range recovered. Uh, range example we covered, uh, functions. Um, okay, so I already gave you a bunch of uh, examples. I think I defined some functions, but uh, effectively, again, let me start again. Like some func, uh, this time uh, uh, it accepts no parameters and return one as a number. Uh, you can define functions inside the functions, so like func, uh, oops, def f2 return two, um, you can do this way, like if you really want to. Um, the complication of this, this f2 is only available inside the function, so if I try to call f2 here, like outside the function, outside the main block, it's not going to work, because it's, this name does not exist uh, unless you're inside this function. Uh, you can call it from different places uh, and do whatever you want. Um, the function that I showed you don't accept any parameters, uh, but uh, obviously they can accept any number of parameters. So for example, uh, let's uh, do this way, like a, b, and c. So, so now uh, the function 
uh, func uh, have to accept three parameters and by these names. Um, and look, let's say func one, two, three, and instead of returning, uh, I'll remove this internal one, uh, returning um, just one, we just will return some of these variables. And let me print this value. And it should return six. Uh, but now our function now requires to, to have these three parameters. Um, sometimes it's useful to have some default parameters. So, so like normally you don't specify all parameters and assume some, some default. So for example, this can be easily done in Python by doing this uh, syntax. Uh, so for example, we can put the last mm, c value to be five. Like assuming it's, so this one now assumes a default value unless c is if C is specified, then the C will be assigned, well, if the third parameter was specified, it will be assigned that value. If uh, third parameter was not specified, then it will use uh, five. Um, maybe it would be better to just print uh, this value. So if I say A equal A, and just copy paste it, this uh, for all other variables, B, oops, B and C. Uh, so again, example this one, example with a mission, uh, all of them are supposed to work or should work. Like in this, yeah, it was using the three and in this case it start using five. Uh, what else? Uh, so there's a lot of cool features uh, in Python uh, where you can use uh, arguments like uh, as their positional arguments. So that's uh, one obvious way how you use them. Uh, or you can actually use them as uh, named arguments. So this is an interesting thing. Uh, and uh, as named arguments, you can uh, specify that you want to overwrite, uh, like in this way, you can set first B value and then C value to 42, and maybe later specify the uh, again, the A value again. So if I comment out this one and execute, it will actually work. So it will uh, it will use A as uh, one as we assigned. Oh, I should have used something different. Uh, so yeah, so A is two, B is one, and C forty two. So we don't have to actually follow the order. So the only kind of restriction is you cannot mix and match. This uh, uh, there's a limited mix and match between these two. So for example, you can start with the positional arguments. So for, so if I specify one. Uh, this will automatically go to to first argument of the function, so and it would work perfectly. But I cannot put one something after I already started put named arguments. So for example, if I put uh, this one, uh, this will not be C. So it's, uh, so this will actually be result in an error, like a syntax error. So it's saying that some positional argument follow keyword argument. So this is simply not allowed by Python. But uh, this one will be perfectly fine. So the first one will go to A, uh, B will be as a named argument, and we didn't specify C, but C is have like, it has a default value, so uh, nothing special needs to be done. So everything is fine. Um, okay, so that's examples, uh, that's examples of positional, examples for arguments, mixing, as I just uh, talked about, uh, default values, default arguments. Uh, and the two more things that I want to talk about is um, uh, combining the arguments. So there's this two, um, so that's related to the tuples, and you may uh, look more about the tuples later, uh, but in, in context of um, uh, arguments, in uh, kind of function arguments. There's a few cool features. Uh, let me try to recreate those things. Uh, okay, so this is just variable names that I'm assigning, but there are two special characters. So, so this one, so the variable kw, will now contain all uh, positional arguments. Uh, and all uh, key w arcs will contain all arguments that were supplied by name. So now it's a function uh, that actually accepts any number of parameters, like uh, be it uh, by the value, by the position, and uh, we can access all of them uh, kind of through this key arcs, key w arcs arguments. And we can actually mix and match. We can specify some named arguments like a and b, 
and then the rest will be uh, gathered in this special variable. So, for example, if I specify uh, 1, B, 2, and then there's uh, some other stuff, uh, so A and B will be assigned uh, appropriately, and uh, foobar and X will go to kargs or kw arcs. Uh, so yeah, so it's uh, actually worked almost as it's expected. Uh, oh, oopsie doopsie. Uh, I forgot to specify this. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, let me try to figure out. Okay, so we have to put the seventh here somewhere. Yeah, so there is a it's kind of hard to figure out how to do this uh, non-positional stuff. Uh, but in any case, what I was trying to say, uh, uh, the reason for this argument, you probably will see it if you dig into the um, uh, internals of the sum of the libraries. Uh, you're not going to be explicitly using it, uh, but it's very interesting mechanism in Python where you can create a function that simply proxies all the parameters somewhere downstream without actually processing in any way, or only processing uh, very few parameters uh, from these functions. But uh, it's just interesting uh, way of uh, dealing in Python. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the uh, lecture, uh, but I'll try to cover a few more important stuff. So first of all, running the applications. So this will be so this one it will be needed for your project, at least some parts of it. Um, first of all, standalone applications. So as I said, you can uh, create a script, you can run the application. So in kind of you can have this Python stuff, and in command line, uh, I can open terminal in my folder. I simply type Python, uh, Python three, and uh, if I remember from my file, scratch py. So this will run. Um, in the, all the projects, I'm asking you to create uh, programs that uh, process the command line parameters. So for that one, it's actually very simple to do. You have to do this magical word import sys, and then uh, simply access the sys argv uh, as a list. And you can access any number of parameters from there. Uh, oops, so I actually have to do it in terminal uh, foobar. So now, so this sysargv uh, simply has the its own uh, name of the program. So in this case, it's scratchpy, uh, and and whatever parameters were specified. If I want to access the first specified parameter, it would be argv1, um, and uh, the second one are obviously argv2, and. Uh, I already had this, just as a reminder, so we have a length uh, as a method to, to check the length of the uh, arguments. So this one will just uh, simply state this one. If I run it in this way, it will complain that uh, it cannot access n one if a uh, number of parameters are not, uh, not less than three in this case. Uh, one note for the projects uh, right away, uh, I'm not going to test for the incorrect input, so you can uh, not have uh, procedures to check that the input was correct or not correct. Uh, it's always nice to include those things, uh, but uh, again, uh, our homework is for the socket programming, not uh, for this specific part. Uh, okay, so in important modules I already mentioned. Um, so this, the modules is the way Python program is being organized. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, modules that are available. There's tons of standard modules and uh, some modules you can uh, kind of install from the internet that just extends something. There's like a module for the statistical processing, uh, pretty powerful one. And there's also a module for deep learning uh, stuff, like if you're interested in this thing. Uh, but effectively, regarding for um, kind of modules, so the important one that you will always include will be this uh, sys module. Uh, so you simply for um, all the stuff that you will need to write not to standard output, you have to use the sys std stdr uh, write uh, function. So even though I'm using uh, Python uh, print command all the time, so this one you most likely not going to be using. Uh, either at all or uh, in very limited circumstances uh, as part of your project. You should use this one. Um, and they, they simply go to slightly different stuff. 
Uh, you can import uh, in sli several different ways. So uh, let me try to think. Uh, so you can import the whole module and then access stuff from the module. You can import and, if, um, and rename this module to something else. For example, now I renamed sys to foo and now I can access to uh, the same symbols from uh, using different name. Uh, that's another one. Uh, I can import only part of the module. Like for example, I can import from module sys. Uh, I can import argv. So now I imported that uh, symbol argv from the module and uh, can ac actually directly access uh, those things. So that's uh, important stuff. And yeah. And one thing that I want to highlight, and I hope you will ex use that as part of the your, your project implementation. You, you, it's a bad idea to write the whole complete project in one file, like a very bad idea. And it's so easy to create a sub module uh, as, as well, your own module is, is part of the Python. Uh, so one thing what you can do, like I'm getting back to uh, this same terminal. So let's say I'm creating a file X look just full pipe so I'm just created another file um, in that folder and in this file I will do print one uh, okay maybe better stuff like x1 and that's it all you need to do uh, to create the module is simply create the file and then you can import it uh, okay so we got the modules so you can create your own modules uh, what you can import you can import uh, Okay, so now <laughs> important stuff. I've just covered the, the basics of the Python, the basic structure. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of things that I um, didn't cover so far, and I really want you to go exploring Python in different ways. Um, for example, you can go to the tutorial pages. You can get the, the detailed documentation if you're like, missing something or like, you forgot the specific function or. Uh, PyCharms not not giving you proper advice uh, like what name of the variable. All of this is documented in uh, like is very extensively documented. Um, in addition to what I just covered, I want you to get a little bit of uh, hold of classes and objects. Um, like I hope you get some idea from other languages from your other courses. I just want you to show the syntax. Uh, this in no way it reflects the, the full coverage, uh, but I'm expecting you to have uh, classes, like your implementation of project, to use some form of a classes because it will significantly simplify uh, your life and can provide you some form of modularity so you potentially can reuse this code in some other places. Uh, so first thing that I want to introduce is just basic of class. So look, to define a class in Python is almost as, as simple as to define a function. Slightly different uh, syntax and there are a few uh, conventions. Uh, so for example, look, it can define a class person uh, and kind of create class using uh, this format. So one thing that you may notice, there's a double underscore in it, double underscore uh, method. So this method is a constructor and it has, a, and in this case, it has two parameters. One is self and the other one is name. Self is a special variable, I mean, not the name itself, but rather the position of this variable. So the first variable in the init and all other methods in a class, as, you, as you'll see later, actually represent uh, the uh, object of the class. So uh, in particular for the init function, uh, it's a constructor uh, that accepts a self as a, <laughs> as a kind of object to the class that had been, uh, object of the class that being just created. And name is whatever variable, like one parameter to the constructor that we're supplying. Uh, so this one can be anything afterwards. This is like a normal function in uh, other aspects. Uh, so you can have positional arguments, you can have a keyword arguments and, and so forth. And then we simply kind of in the constructor, you can do whatever you'd like. And if you want to keep some form of a state uh, for, for, the, for the instance itself, you just have to use self 
uh, kind of the self as part of the reference to the to what you were trying to do. And as with everything else, you can easily create variables like self that name uh, create a variable name that belongs to the class, and you can kind of define whatever you want afterwards. Uh, with the, just a small ex exception that uh, that name will be part of the object itself. So in this case, I created a hunter as object of the class person with the parameter Alex as a first parameter. And the self was automatically substituted for the, um, for the instance of, the, of this class. And I can create inheritance of the class. Uh, so for example, I can create a class professor that derived from the person Kind of the syntax obviously is very very uh, clear and then create a professor with the same name uh, professor with just passing Alex and in this case if I just use this pass that I used before uh, the things are quite simple because now name uh, I mean the constructor was reused from the previous class I can override the constructor in that new constructor I can do something else I can um, look if I decide to, to call the parents class constructor or not, uh, depending on the implementation. Uh, so, in addition, what we can do is uh, we can do overriding methods, it's like obvious stuff, and there's nothing special that needs to be done in Python. Um, no, I mean, in Python, there's no concept of a private public. Uh, protected, so everything is kind of in one garbage. There are some usually naming conventions, so in anything that is starts with underscore, uh, just consider it as a private that you're not supposed to use, but in reality you can actually use everything if you really want to. Uh, and so for the overriding, you simply define the method with the same name and it will be overrided. Um, everything is effective virtual like in, in terms of C++, but uh, you know, if you can override. So in, in, this, in this example, uh, I have a class person defining a constructor that, as we had before, then we defining a say hi method that is using uh, some other uh, method get title in this case. And we, in the base class, uh, we kind of define that this get title returns Earthling um, versus in a professor class, we override in this method to return professor, and kind of we can try to execute this code and see what's gonna happen. So we can try that in our PyCharms. Uh, so already prepared this code. Uh, so effectively, just a copy paste from the slide. Uh, as a creating, there is nothing special. I just wanted to see uh, that it's indeed uh, working properly. Uh, so in in the first case when I just created the person and uh, it obviously uh, used that uh, persons class uh, where uh, get title method and when I use a professor it uses a, a professor's get title so it's kind of it's still I was using say hi from the base class but that one got redirected to get title of the professor class. Uh, and a few a few small comments uh, about additional annotations that can exist in Python uh, for the Python classes. So the, there's a thing called the class method. So this one is uh, mm, uh, you can call it on a class, and it, it gets a reference to the class. So this is uh, not yet a static method as in in terms of C++ or Java. So this is something in, be in between. It kind of behaves as a static, but it still uh, has uh, some reference to the class. Like even class is a some form of object in uh, in Python. Um, we're probably not going to be using that too much anywhere. Uh, so the other one is a more uh, standard uh, static method. So if you annotate some specific method as a static, like it is a add sign and a static method. So then you don't have to define any of this self variable um, and you cannot because nothing will be passed automatically. And you can call this method just using the class name anytime you'd like to. And it will just print it, do something. Um, so the final part that I want you to, uh, final part of this lecture, that I want to get some idea how to write and read files. And uh, there's a few important differences that I want to, uh, you to understand. So first of all, uh, to open file, you can simply open. Uh, to uh, write to the file, you can use this uh, handler returned by the, I mean, to read write, 
uh, you simply uh, use the handler returned by the open method, not, not handler, but the effect of the instance of the, some, some kind of a class, and then call read and call write operating, uh, operation. Something similar will be for sockets. So if you notice, there's uh, additional stuff in addition to the file name. Uh, so when you open file and uh, the opening for the reading indicated by the letter R uh, in, in this open specification, so the second letter actually indicates in which specific mode you open the file. Uh, so for the project, you always should use B option. And uh, the difference between two is one is open in a text mode and assumes there is stuff, uh, kind of it's a text file, it will, whenever you read stuff, it will convert, it will read to UTF stream and try to uh, kind of interpret this file as UTF uh, to as much as possible. There is also some special handling of uh, uh, line endings. So for the t text files, there's like some weird difference between DOS and Unix format and uh, Python will try to reconcile those things. If you open the binary mode, uh, then you will not be doing any kind of uh, conversions, uh, and that's what is expected for the project one, two, and three. No, sorry, project one and two. Uh, so that's uh, for the reading, and for the writing is effectively W and the same interpretation of T. In the second letter, so it's either text file or B file, and you should be using a B file all the time. Uh, for the Python 3, there's a little bit more complex to use B with binary files and uh, use uh, some kind of writing basic text, uh, but you can use uh, some kind of structure like I'm showing on this slide, so you can always encode the UTF string uh, using the encode the UTF. Uh, finally, I want you to show here is this with the syntax. Uh, so, the logically, it's kind of equivalent with the one exception that you don't have to explicitly close the file. Yes, so when you open the file, you exit the program, uh, all handlers will be closed anyways. Uh, but uh, if you open in a lot of files uh, in the same program before you're closing them, then you better close those files uh, after you're done with them. Otherwise, you can kind of have some form of a state explosure and nothing good will happen. Uh, and with with this will happen automatically. Like within this block, this file is open. As as soon as the kind of this block is exited, then the file is automatically closed. Uh, something similar in principle you can do with the sockets, but in, in the way we're going to be using sockets, you're probably not going to be using this much. But you will be seeing this uh, construct of with uh, uh, quite a bit in other cases. And final, so this is promising, like I'm promising you, it's a final, final slide uh, for this presentation, is error handling. Uh, this doesn't really apply for the, fully apply for sockets because there, we also have a slightly different error handling in there. But in general, a lot of things in um, Python is being reported as an exception. Uh, I already showed you one thing and I already showed the example how to use that and actually that was a very similar example like this. Um, uh, like uh, try exception blocks. So if you don't have this try exception block, uh, try accept, then whenever some kind of error or fatal error is happening, the, your program will be simply terminated and you'll see some long message with the, with the long like Kind of things is stating from where that error was uh, fired and kind of nothing good is happening. If you're expecting potential error, so you have to properly handle this case. So for example, if uh, this was the program to understand uh, kind of to print some value from the, from the dictionary, and I just to print something else if that item does not exist, that is the expected way of this program is supposed to behave. Uh, similarly, in other cases where you um, may need to have additional error, uh, error handling, uh, you can always discover what kind of errors uh, this specific method is uh, throwing in the documentation or through error and trial, like whenever you see some kind of errors uh, being thrown, you can always uh, 
kind of see what the kind of type and then uh, try the ex ex kind of add the accept statement for that specific type. Uh, and like, you will need to read a lot of documentation, especially for the sockets. Uh, they have in different places uh, various things that will throw an error and you will have to handle those exceptions. Okay, so this, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping, yeah, so this is the definitely, definitely the last slide for this brief <laughs> review of, of the Python. Um, not too brief, as I realized at this point. Um, I hope it was helpful. Again, I'm not expecting you to learn Python in, in, its, in its entirety from uh, this very short lecture. Uh, there's a tons of additional documentations uh, that you can find uh, on um, on YouTube, on other online resources. As I said, I already linked the six-hour video of the beginner tutorial. Um, I'm hoping that one is a little bit more comprehensive than uh, my one-hour talk. And um, yeah, so this is the, the basic Python. Uh, so the next part of the module will be talking about the, how to deal with BSD sockets in Python. Again, this is still will be Python, still introduction to the Python, uh, but will be introduction not to the basics of the Python, but rather to specific uh, socket module of the Python. How to, again, I'm not going to cover everything, what we're going to see there, will be just very, very basic of sockets. And I'm expecting you to read more documentation online. Um, <laughs> this is basic of the programming. If you don't know how to do it, you read the documentation. You, you still don't know, you try to uh, look up some additional sources. But uh, don't forget that uh, there is one requirement to, for all the projects. Whenever you copy some code somewhere online, I mean, you can use internet that's that's what the, the internet is designed for uh, but you like for example if you're using some slash dot examples uh, you still have to cite those uh, references uh, either in a readme file or both in a readme file and uh, some specific places in your code uh, because that's part of the plagiarism that's what uh, we also be checking when we review in your code uh, using the automated tools okay now that was the final words of our modules. I hope again, <laughs> I hope it was interesting. It was uh, I hope it was helpful and uh, see you later.